Hello, I'm Mary B. Today, let's talk about fixing bow shakes. So every violinist has uh, experienced the bow shakes and there are various uh, common reasons for it. Uh, <clears throat> one is just nerves, sheer nerves, and the arm tightens up and produces a sort of tremor in the arm. And uh, that needs to be looked at and experienced so that um, the effects of nerves, uh, you get a bit more used to it and that you can consciously relax your arm or think about something else. Normally when one part starts to break down it's best to not concentrate on that part but concentrate on the other hand. So if the bow is starting to break down it's weird but think about the left hand and um, it takes the pressure off the right. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so let's look at more, more mechanical uh, physical reasons and um, one is that the bow hold, the, the, the fingers, are really not connecting with the bow enough, that they're too far away. For example, that the, the hand is held very, very high off the, the bow like that and everything is, is very high up like that. Uh, you may have very long fingers and you may sort of stretch the arm out like that. But as a matter of fact, that leads to quite a lot of bow problems. Um, I mean, I'm making myself uh, shake the bow, but it's much easier to do it when my fingers are less connected to the bow. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is that the fingers should really be depressed down and curled around the bow as much as possible. So how to change from this, which is quite uh, only using the tips of your fingers. I think one of the best things to do is to actually wrap your first finger up to this particular knuckle here, the middle one here. Okay, so rather than touch the bow with your tips, the fingertips, actually lower the, the hand so that the first finger can wrap around the bow like this, right? And the rest of the hand sort of follows. So it's straighter and then it's more like that, okay? You'll feel um, that you've got a lot more control of the bow as you go down. It is something that you can do if you're playing in front of people and you suddenly get very nervous, the bow starts to shake. You can actually, while you're playing, lower your hand and get a bit more contact with the bow and it usually stops the bow shakes. So let's go to the third reason that uh, the bow might shake and it's a mechanical one to do with the arm. Now if you look at the bow, uh, the bow stroke all the way from the the heel to the tip. Um, let's have a look at the arm and have a look at the different positions that the arm is in. Uh, like you start at the heel and you can see that both parts of the arm are moving, the forearm and the upper arm. Then there comes to a point where it's really just the forearm that's moving. And then when you come near the end of the stroke, the, the upper arm uh, joins in again. So you've got both parts moving, and then just one part moving, and then both parts moving. So try this for yourself. It's quite important to understand the mechanics of, of how your bow arm works because <clears throat> if your bow shakes, you will be able to identify um, the moments. And it's usually a moment when either the forearm or the upper arm has to change shape, has to do something different. And just before you do that, there may be a resistance, a reluctance, um, a difficulty doing that. For example, 
a lot of people find that uh, when the forearm uh, takes over, when the upper arm stops moving, there's a little bounce there. Like that. Now the reason for that is because the when the upper arm stops and the forearm takes over, there's an adjustment in the muscles and there's usually somewhere along the line, somewhere in your arm, there's a tightness, right? As it moves from both parts moving to just one part moving. So once you realize that, uh, you can actually do something really nice to stop it. And it's instead of um, thinking in a parallel way, We all think of playing in a parallel way between the bridge and the fingerboard and we've got to be parallel. But as a matter of fact, um, it's very useful to think uh, of going out. Push the bow out in front of you. When I say that, um, if you look at the if you look at the parallel bowing uh, that, that that we're all taught to do, and then you look at the angle that I'm actually pushing the bow out to, what I'm actually doing there is. Um, getting to a point where I can really straighten my elbow. Okay, I'm straightening my elbow. And that gives the muscles a chance to sort of feel uh, that they've got a fresh start. Because if the, um, if the elbow is always bent like this, and we never really um, open it out, we may never uh, really fully explore uh, what's happening with the muscles. So it's an incredibly useful uh, thing to do, just to feel that you're freeing up your bowing. Then you can feel the different movements and interactions between the upper arm and the forearm, you can feel them much more easily and you can actually identify the little moment when something is just slightly tightening up. And it is that moment when the upper arm stops moving and the forearm more or less takes over. That's the, the point where most people start to shake. So that's the reason why a lot of people shake on the way down at that particular point when the forearm takes over. But uh, don't forget there's another reason why the bow might be shaking and it's simply that you're not, uh, that you're holding the bow too tightly. <laughs> this is called the bow hold and a lot of people call this the bow grip. That's the wrong name. Because this uh, stuff that's wound around the bow, that's the bow grip. It's not right to call, it, call this what we call the bow hold, the bow grip, and it's the wrong word. Never really grip the bow just like you never really grip the violin. It's all a question of balance. Put it on the string and, and then just leave the last two fingers. The bow can make a sound without you doing anything at all. That's the sound of the bow. Um, the bow has a weight and that's the weight of it. Um, that is an extremely good um, way to free up your arm so that you don't, uh, you don't control it all the time. You're not doing anything by tightening up. So as you go down, you can discover for yourself 
the moments as you go down where there's a little tremor and you can learn to relax um, the part of your arm where you felt the tightness. It might be here, it might be here, it might be in the shoulder, it might be behind your arm. Remember you don't create a good bowing arm by forcing it or by straining or trying to control everything. It's actually a marvellous, uh, very, very sensitive instrument, the bow. And to let the arm uh, almost mould itself along with the bow is the best way to think about it. Oops, so so I, hope I hope this has helped you. And yet again, the message is um, take things slowly and take it apart. So I hope you enjoy your practice and I hope this has been helpful. I'll say bye-bye for now. Bye.